This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, high-performance cloud hosting for everyone. Visit linode.com slash macvoices and take $20 off your first server package. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we have another Road to Mac Stock show this time around. Uh, we're talking to all the instructors, uh, speakers who are going to be speaking at Mac Stock 2019, talking to some of the other attendees, um, just anybody that's making this year's Mac Stock what it will be. Obviously, what it will be because it's not yet. Um, but we're definitely all going to have a lot of fun. We're going to learn from each other, and we hope you will join us. This time to talk about what he's going to be talking about, uh, Mr. David Ginsberg of In Touch with iOS. David, welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to see you as well. I just saw you, I think, last week on, on my podcast. So uh, glad to be here. Yeah, well, I, I appreciated you inviting me on. It was uh, it was a good discussion. But um, this time around, though, of course, we're going to be talking about MacStock, and you are presenting. Is, is this the fifth year for you, David? It is the fifth year. I've spoken wow. all well, the last four years since the inaugurated uh, first year. I still never forget that. I can't believe it's been five years. Jeez. I, I know it doesn't seem possible. It doesn't seem yeah, possible. Time, time has just flown by. And uh, yeah, we're uh, uh, real, real, real excited to, to be up on stage again uh, this year and talk about another great topic. And we got a lot of great topics in Mac stock. So I think uh, this is going to be a lot of fun this year. Yeah, I was a little little concerned with uh, Mike's concerned as in what the heck am I going to submit for something with create um, is is a theme, but uh, you know Mike explained it a little bit and okay, you just twist your thing around a little bit and target that aspect of of uh, of whatever it is you're talking about, yeah. and so I will ask you what are you talking about in terms of create. Well, I uh, came up with a great topic, uh, create with, uh, with uh, using notes. Uh, you know, the Apple notes program is, uh, is a, you know, probably, not, I guess it is pretty well used by most people, but it is pretty limited to what it can do in some cases, but there are some other things it can do and especially on iOS. And that's really my, always my, been, been my focus uh, since that's my kind of my topics of that I discuss with my, my podcast. So um, but uh, the Notes app has is, is got some great features in it, you know, including uh, inserting uh, photos and, and being able to write, being creative with it. And that's what kind of inspired me to, to come up with this topic for, for this time around, as well as there are other Notes apps out there, uh, specifically uh, one, uh, Microsoft OneNote, which I have you know, experience working with uh, in, in the corporate world. So I thought it'd be a great topic to, to really give uh, people uh, some understanding about uh, how to, uh, to utilize these uh, programs and, and be, be creative. I, I think it's an interesting, interesting topic to take and spin in a create fashion um, yeah. because I'm, I'm a huge fan of Apple Notes. Me too. Um, and I, I find that it does everything I really need a note program to do. Um, I have some experience with OneNote and that's about as far as I'm going to go because I don't have that much experience with it. Yeah. Um, but any way you take it, having something that syncs so that whatever notes are in your iPhone or on your iPad are also on your Mac and everything is constantly updated is is so useful that you just can't believe it. Oh, it's extremely useful. And and I really love the fact that I put a note in my iPhone, it's on my iPad, it's on my, it's on my Mac. I mean, it, it's just there. And what that's what's so great about the notes program and they've expanded a lot of things. Again, I don't want to get too deep in what I'm going to talk about, but uh, they've really expanded a lot of things on Notes. Um, one, um, uh, uh, Microsoft OneNote does have some appealing things that I'll talk about too. Uh, specifically, you know, you, you you compare the Microsoft OneNote to something like a three-ring binder, you know, that we used to use back in the old days when we went to school. Uh, th that's kind of how how OneNote is is organized by uh, you. Uh, keeping in uh, sections and pages. And if you remember the, those old trapper keepers we used to have, right? And you had the three bind ring binders and you used to put the pieces of paper in there and then you had the tabs and the other thing was, and everything was labeled, right? In your, in your book on your subjects. Uh, well, you know, OneNote works a lot like that too. So whereas Apple Notes is a little different. I mean, so, so I'm kind of giving, I'm going to give a spin to seeing what kind of, uh, what, what kind of differences you have between these two applications and, um, and where it could be beneficial for you. I'll be anxious to see how you how you characterize that, because um, I have mixed feelings about 
when we went through the skeuomorphic phase of, of the operating system, and that became a bit of a point of ridicule, and then they, they moved away from it, and so it's not as much, there are times that some of those old metaphors work really, really well, and other times it's right. just like, okay, they're, they're laying something on top of something that really doesn't need to be there. And so I'll be anxious to see how you, how you feel about it and, and where you think which one applies the best. Yeah, and I think I think these these applications uh, really depend on what your need is. Um, I think for simple simple notes, that's that's where the Apple Notes comes into play. For more elaborate, I mean, there are other apps I'm going to talk about too. Those are going to be the two I focus on during the 20 minute uh, uh, main presentation. But of course, we get to have our great deep dives. So I'll I'll, I'll dive into a couple other apps that I like that seem to work real well with notes too. So. But the whole spin of it is create and trying to be able to be creative with uh, with what you can with notes and, and keeping things uh, creative with it. And uh, and I think uh, I think that's where, where it's really going to have a good standout with my presentation. Yeah, note note programs are, are a particular fascination to me because there's so many different different programs out there. There's so many different metaphors and even worse or better or just whatever um, are the different ways that people use notes. I mean, some people are quite happy using the sticky zap and, and that's it. And I know people that, you know, they open the sticky zap and you can't even see their desktop or uh, oh, anything else because th they've got, they've got stickies everywhere. And then there's the, you know, the, uh, I, I don't know if it's the top of the heap anymore, but there's Evernote and then there's everything in yeah. between. And so, you know, if you, you, I think, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having multiple note programs that you depend on. You may just use them for different yeah. tasks, playing to their strengths. And then I think that's what a lot of people do. They, they have these apps that are, they're, they're multiple, multiple ways of doing it. One of the good things with Microsoft OneNote is Microsoft has adapted Mac just nicely. They, they've really made things easy to, uh, to work with. Um, you can you, you can do the same thing with syncing over the cloud through the Office 365. So uh, again, I'll talk about that briefly during the presentation as well. But that's what's great about uh, the OneNote app is the same thing. You mentioned Evernote. I've 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 kind of I kind of lost uh, lost interest in Evernote. It it, it kind of faded away over the many years. You know, the ownership changes and a lot of other things that happened. Um, I, I just didn't find it as as uh, as intriguing. So I mean, I don't even don't even talk about it <laughs> honestly. But uh, uh, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, interesting discussion uh, to really come up with the different things that what these note programs can do for you to be creative. Yeah, and the other thing about note programs, and and it concerns me with just about any note program I get into is there's this, it seems like just with developers, there's always pressure to add new features. Right. And at some point I know that note programs I've used in the past, they just hit this feature bloat threshold where, I, okay, I start to look elsewhere because I don't need it to, you know, make my breakfast in the morning and, you know, hang up my laundry. I just need a note program. And so if, if you can find something that, now maybe you do want it to do all those extra things, but you know, th that's, that's sort of the beauty of this, that you can pick and choose from so many great options. Oh, absolutely. And that's what, that's what really is going to, uh, what I'm going to drive home is just, just giving people the, uh, the ideas of what you can do uh, with these programs. And, and it's not just Apple, no Apple Notes. Uh, Apple Notes let, let, uh, definitely has come a long way. There's no question about it. I think it's it, it's got a lot better uh, what you can do with it, but you know there there are other uh, there are other uh, applications out there that you can uh, easily uh, take a look at with notes, and you could you know you you choose. That's why I'm going to give you know give my biased opinions on uh, keeping this the best uh, what best app is going to be for you. Linode.com slash Mac Voices is where you want to go if you need a virtual hosted cloud server. Why is Linode so great? because that's what Linode specializes in. They feature native SSD storage, a 40 gigabit network, and industry-leading processors so that your server is FAST fast. Because you pay for only what you use with hourly billing across all plans and add-on services, no extra charges for data transfer, no hidden fees or nasty surprises at the end of the month. Because Linode has a new cloud manager with an improved user interface, so deploying your server or servers is easier than ever. Because Linode has data centers around the world, 
including one just launched in Toronto and one opening soon in Mumbai. So if location matters, Linode has it covered. Because they have a large documentation library to help you get started and help you make the most of your server. Because Linode has 24-7 live customer support, so if you get stuck or have issues, help is just a phone call away. Because Linode has a ton of add-ons, so that you can customize your server with exactly what you want and what you need. Backups, blocks, node balancers, load balancers, and much more. So what do you need to take advantage of all this? Visit linode.com slash macvoices to get set up and to get $20 credit toward your first server. Again, linode.com slash macvoices gets you $20 off your first server. Check it out now and be up and running in minutes. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. Yeah, in the past, I think you've focused, well, you've always focused on on iOS and, and some of the the extra things. I mean, I think the first year, if I remember correctly, you did uh, something on the Apple Watch. Last um, year, yep. Yeah, so I, I like the idea that you're not just, you know, necessarily focused on uh, on um, a device specific thing, but more a function or program right. specific of getting things done and how you do it and how you can be creative with it. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm not, Although I, I've I've kind of focused my 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 uh, podcasts and other things, my discussion and being an expert at iOS and and I, iPhone and iPad, I still use a Mac just like everybody else in our community. And uh, the Mac has just as much of a place with Notes than uh, than, than as it does with uh, with the other devices. So same thing when I have to use PCs. So I mean, you know, even if I had a PC, I have to, I, the great thing about it is my PC will sync with. Uh, with my Mac and with my iPhone and iPad with OneNote. So, um, so that's one benefit you have because there are going to be people out there that, you know, like me that, that work in the enterprise that have to, that have to use PCs too. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not too, too terribly excited about it, but I have to, I don't have much of a choice. So, uh, but it's, uh, it's important to, to, to be, a, be aware of it and then stay on top of it too. And I was going to mention too. There's a, there's a couple other apps I had in my list here, including uh, a Penultimate, Good Notes, and Drafts. Those are a couple other great apps that I'll get get a mention too. But there's oh my gosh, there's just so many I, notes apps out there now. I, 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 when I started researching for this uh, for this topic, I mean I, I probably could add another ten or fifteen of these note apps that are out there now that are just as good on the, on the iPad for sure, um, uh, if not the iPhone. So. Yeah, I, I have to admit, um, because I don't I don't live in that that particular world. I guess being able to sync across not just devices but also platforms becomes a factor in what you select. It does. It does. And it, and again, I think most of the, your audience is, if not most of the audience, is going to be at Mac stock. I don't think too too many use PCs, but you know, do you have to? I mean. I, I felt, you know, by by this being my career, having to have to work on PCs, uh, you have to know about it, and it's 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 a good it's a good piece of awareness to be just really aware of what you uh, uh, what these apps can do for you, and if you have to use a PC, at least you're ready for it. Yeah. David, do you consider this session um, a beginner session or an intermediate session, or is it kind of cut across, or, or an advanced session, or does it cut across all three? I think it'll, it'll cut across all three. I mean, I'm not going to definitely say not. It's going. It's not beginner. Um, it's uh, probably more leads towards the high beginner, intermediate, and and I'll probably get a little bit in advance as far as what uh, you'll learn about about the notes uh, products and what they can do for you. Because uh, that's, I mean, as we know with Mac stock, it's hard. It's hard to really know what uh, what um, uh, what you want to to learn because there's so many different levels of learning. I experienced that in my Apple user group. I, I mean, there's so many people with different levels of learning where they're the very beginners all the way up to the advanced, but then they sit in through some of my sessions of what I do. And then they, they, you know, some of them are, I can see them rolling their eyes. Oh, I already know this. And versus, uh, uh, versus some that are really intent to listen to want to learn. Um, so I would probably, if I were to, to say what it is, I would say it, it does kind of cut across all three. I don't know if I would go real hot, real into advanced too much, but more, more so I'd say def definitely intermediate. Yeah. And I'm, I, I've always believed that 
if you if you're teaching an advanced session, it's real easy to blow people away, no matter what the topic. But if if you are somewhere in the intermediate area, you know, even beginners can pick up a lot by seeing that because just just by the nature of watching somebody work with a program, you're going to learn and, and not only how it works, but also some things that may apply to you. And I just think that's a, a, it's, it's like playing a sport. You always, if at all possible, want to try to play with someone at least as good, if not better than you, because that forces you to get better and encourages you to get better um, as opposed to just having things spoon fed to you. Exactly. And then, and, and the thing is with, the thing is, thing is with notes and any note taking apps, you, you want to, you want to be creative and efficient at the same time. You want to be a bit efficient and in, in knowing how to keep things in one place. And that's, I think that's all of our, our, our issues all the time um, dealing with email. I mean, email is another thing that I talked about before in pre- previous sessions, how to manage email and how to use that email. And I believe uh, Dr. Mack, Bob Levitas talked about that last year about being efficient with email. And you know, I, I couldn't, I, I have a challenge to some of the things he talked about, but um, the, the nice thing about the notes apps is, is you can include emails in, into the notes app, which, which makes it, uh, which makes it nice. Cause then you can go back and find something uh, very easily. Now with one note, you have a little better way of organizing it. Whereas, you know, I was just looking for my notes right now. I just finally find them, found them this morning as, as we were talking here, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard to find the uh, notes when you scroll through them in Apple notes. Whereas, um, you know, something like OneNote or others, they have uh, tabs, they have sections, they have pages where it's uh, makes it a little bit easier to, to find things without having to actually do a search, you know. And to hark back to a presentation, I think I think that was last year. You know, the one thing about Notes, the Apple Notes is it's free. It's laying there. That's the thing, yes. It's all on your devices. Use it, you know. And then if you want to go and get some of the other features, then, frankly, you're probably going to have to get into a paid situation of one kind or another. Um, so start with Notes and let David be your guide there. And then yeah. if you find that it's not meeting your needs, then, well, David can help you pick up some other options too. And again, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna review many of the different other options out there during the deep dive. 20 minutes. I wanted my my, and that's what all of our challenges are with with doing our 20 minutes uh, first sessions is to to bring home the topic and, and make it simple, make it uh, and make it straightforward. So, you know, you'll, you'll you'll learn a lot during the 20 short minutes that uh, that we all have to talk about the, our topics as well. And then then and the nice thing is that when we get into our deeper dives we'll be able to get you into some more stuff that's a little more advanced and give, bring, it'll bring more interest uh, uh, to that. So and my deeper dive is kind of late towards the end of the day. So, and then I think your, I think your presentation is before lunch. So <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I think timing is going to be always interesting to see what, how people are feeling when they, they come in to see it. Yeah. For mine, it's always interesting to be the last thing that is standing between people and food. It's yeah. just, <laughs> I I better nail it or I'm, I'm a dead man. (laughs) Um, Go ahead. Yeah, David, you know, I've been trying to ask all the presenters, I mean, and you've been there for all four years so far. This is, this is the fifth, both as an attendee and as a speaker, but Max talk, I think has become something special. It was a great idea. It was a lot of fun the first time and it's just become better. I think each time, and I don't know if it's because we keep going back, we see old friends uh, and meet new friends or what it is, but it's it's absolutely one of my favorite weekends of the year. Is that pretty reflective of the way you feel about it? It, it definitely is for me. I mean, I, I value all the friendships I've created. You and I are friends, Allison, for friends with, I made Allison, uh, Mike Potter, we're good friends. Barry Falk is my good friend, and and he lives locally here in Chicago. And uh, we, and we ended up uh, having a, a you know a friendship and hanging out a lot of times because that's obviously when people live out of, uh, in other states, that's always a little bit of a challenge. So, uh, but uh, yeah, the networking in itself is just the value all by all, all on its own. Again, I keep always bringing up the first year, and you guys welcome me into into the into the community and. I never thought I'd be a podcaster and I am now. And a lot of things I got to, a lot of things I got to, to do that, uh, I, that I'm doing now that I never thought before I would be doing. It, it just, it just, I just love it. And it's uh, it's just a, it's just a great place to be. Um, 
it's in the Chicago area, so it's easy to get to, which is really good. Um, and a lot, a lot of other conferences can tend to be a little more of a challenge to get to. Although you and I and other, many others love going to Vegas, you know, when we have conferences there or uh, Orlando, Florida is always a big t favorite place a lot of people go to. Uh, but those are always places that are a little bit more of a challenge to get to. Uh, and Chicago is always, especially in the summer, Chicago has usually really good weather and it's a beautiful city. And and not only do you have max stock to, 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 to check out, if you decide you want to stay a few extra days, you'll you'll have options uh, afterwards. And we had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, attendees go uh, downtown to Chicago, see see the city, see the beautiful Apple Store, and uh, all the other things that are out there, and as well sports. You know, we got great two great baseball teams here, and uh, so that's that's what really gets people to come out to to, to max stock is. Not only is the is the topics and the discussions and, and meeting people and learning, um, being able to come to a really cool city too. And and the idea that yes, there are speakers and there are attendees, but those those lines blur probably you know ten seconds after you walk in the door, um, because you know you're eating you're eating together. Um, you're sitting through each other's presentations and you're sitting with people that aren't presenting. And that, that's the thing I think I love it, about it. With some other conferences, there always is this, a little more of an us and them. Not, not all the time, but a little more of an us and them. And with MacStock, it's just all us and, and there is no them. And, and it's that way. I mean, we, you know, with, with Barry's, uh, the, the, the Mac Mingle uh, for Saturday night, we, we, we had such a blast last year by, you know, the, the, doing the karaoke and then getting to know people there and, and having crazy times uh, uh, between the hotel and having some of those, those fun things we did there. And, and then the karaoke at the restaurant. And uh, uh, I, I remember, uh, uh, I, I remember uh, uh, hooking up with some people, there was a wedding there. And I think my wife and, and Kelly, uh, come on, uh, if you remember that story, uh, you know, they, they crashed their, they're coming back from getting married and they were, they're eating their wedding cake. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, just some just crazy stuff to start happening, but fun stuff, nothing like, like out of the, out of the, out of the ordinary crazy, but, but that's the thing. We, we all were, we're, we all, we're all among friends. We had a really great time and, and enjoyed our company, everybody's company. And, uh, there's a, there's no reason why you would not come out to Mac stock. I just, and, and, and I, I I can't I have to commend Mike Potter and what he's done with this uh, with this conference over the years. He's uh, just a he's just a madman when it comes to to getting this uh, going, and we're trying to promote the heck out of it and tell everybody about it. And uh, I, I don't I can't say much more about what, how great it is. And you and I both uh, just love it, and, and that's what's I'm just thrilled to be here. And and you uh, and you taking the time to get everybody to talk to uh, and t tell everybody about it here on Mac Voices. Well, it's 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 a it's an honor and a pleasure because there's so many great people, and this year Mike has some uh, speakers that are first time speakers. Yeah, and several several of them I didn't I, I've never encountered before, never met, and so I'm really enjoying getting to talk to those folks and getting to know them before we get to the conference. And so hopefully that that's something that everyone else will be doing here, watching Mac Voices and, and the Road to Mac Stock as well. And uh, and then then David Sparks being there doing his 500th episode of uh, Mac Power Users, I can't wait to see that. That that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and he's speaking as well, which is great. I, mean, I can't wait to see his uh, what he has to talk about because he's a great presenter. And you know we've got uh, we've got a really good menu of, of speakers that are going to be here uh, this year's uh, this year's conference, and, and I can't wait. And I want to add to my my uh, collection of T-shirts back here. I got to get a fifth one. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that'll be a problem. I, no, I don't know I'm what. I don't know what Mike's going to do this year. He keeps surprising us with things. Yeah. He's got. Uh, he's got. He, he is a good designer too. So he's he's very good at uh, uh, designing uh, th those logos. So I, I really like the one from last year. That one there, the the blue one. Um, mm -hmm. That one turned out nice. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we need to tell folks MacStock2019.com is where you go to register. Um, there are discount codes available. David, your speaker code is? Uh, in touch. I'll Perfect. Hey, yep. And mine is Mac Voices. I really don't care whose speaker code yeah, you use. Use David's, use mine, use any of the other folks, or don't use one at all. 
But at, at the end of the day, just get to Max Doc and come and, and join us, enjoy the weekend, learn a whole lot of stuff, and then go home and start planning for next year because that's the effect that it has on you. You just you're sorry to see it end and you can't wait to get back. Absolutely. So, David, you're doing In Touch with iOS, of course. Um, that's where folks can find you, and they will find you in Woodstock, Illinois, in July. Yes, they will. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Me as well. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. One more time, MacStock2019.com. David's code is In Touch. Mine is Mac Voices. We hope to see you in Woodstock in July. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.